What is up, maniacs, and welcome to Broadend Horizon. I'm your host, as always, Drake Riggs, here to bring you another great episode of the show. This is installment 21. Fresh off the heels of Rise and Landmark 4, it's time to get ready for a massive New Year's Eve extravaganza with the looming Ryzen 40. Joining us first will be former Bellator Bantamway titleist Juan Archuleta, who makes his Ryzen debut opposite the surging South Korean Soo Chol Kim. After Juan, Ryzen Landmark 4's big winner out of the main event, Ren Hiramoto, reflects on his flawless victory over Satoshi Dominator Yamasu. Then last but not least, it's the mercenary, former Bellator featherweight champion AJ McKee, who looks to upset the reigning Ryzen lightweight king Roberto Satoshi De Souza on New Year's Eve. Thanks as always to all of them for chatting, and thanks to everyone who has supported the show and asked questions for the end. Whether you've been watching on YouTube or listening on Spotify, don't forget to hit like and share if you enjoy. And a quick little disclaimer for Ren's portion of the show today, as it's going to look a little bit different and not formatted properly, as I had to record it on the road and did not have all my proper usual equipment. So that is why it is very basic and Zoom formatted rather than what you normally see on the show. So ignore that as best as you can. And uh, along with the lack of your typical proper Broaden Horizon editing. So just wanted to point that out. Anyway, let's get on with the show, you guys. Thanks so much, as always. First up, it's the Spaniard, Juan Archuleta. Yo, Juan. Hey. What's up, man? How you doing? Good. It's been a minute, bro. Yeah, it has. <laughs> Our things. Been. Yeah, good, good. Good, good. Just uh, living it up, man. Living it up. Nice. Hell yeah. Where are you headed? On the way somewhere, I see? <laughs> I just got done with practice. I'm actually chilling with Cub. So. Oh, right on. Yeah, so we just got done practicing and then uh, he- headed to recovery right now. All right, very nice. Yeah, you've been a traveling man. You know, I saw you went to Abu Dhabi and then to Japan, obviously. How was that, man? Was it crazy? Yeah, it was uh, It was good. You know, I stayed stayed uh, active i was actually right after my fight i went hunting and then uh shipped out there and then got the uh, press conference in japan and so it was good to go out and travel and then be back and then get right back into the swing of things yeah for sure and was, was that your first time in abu dhabi too when you went there yeah yeah it was first time i mean there's Japan was a hundred percent times better. Okay. Than out there, you know? <laughs> a lot more culture, a lot more history, and the this the environment. It was it was it was super badass. Yeah, I can imagine, man. And what was the press conference like? Obviously, different, you know, from the ones you've been used to in yeah, America like, and whatnot. Yeah, for me, I mean, even me and AJ were just sitting there, like, man, this is the most people we've ever had at a press conference. <laughs> like, this is insane. Like, they're you know, because there was really a big crowd there, like interested in what we had to say and like present or how we presented ourselves. And it was just cool to be a uh, part of that whole lineup coming in and making history, the first going five versus five promotion against promotion. And so a lot of people were, are very interested in it, you know, and it, it's an honor to be part of that. And so, um, you know, to break history like that and to go there and just be one of the five, it's, it's, it's honoring and humbling, you know? Yeah, it's awesome, man. I mean, we've been talking about this for years now. You know, I remember asking you at some of you know, your past fights and everything. It's finally, you know, getting to happen. So for you, like, what was the feeling like when it was finally offered to you and everything was official? Like, how cool was that? Yeah, it was. I mean, it's still like, um, it's still not believable until, <laughs> you know, you go out there for fight week. But I mean, it, it's cool, you know, because you're, you're bringing in, um, you're, you're, you're marking yourself in and, and, becoming uh known in mma history you know and so to to be part of that it's like that's humbling you know and you're just like it's still hard to take in because the main thing i want to focus on is my performance you know i don't really care about the wins or losses but it's going there and performing like i know how you know if i could do that that night i'm 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 gonna set a history in the making you know it's performance so that's what i'm truly ready for yeah, and it's still obviously early uh, until we get to that point. But like, do you feel any pressure because of you know the atmosphere of everything? You know, the organization versus organization, like you were saying. But anything like that? Um, not pressure, just more excitement. Um, obviously, it's just like, hey, you have to win. You know, like we got to show, show up and show out. It's just like, well, I'm gonna perform. <laughs> you know, the, that the rest is gonna take care of itself. But now it's like, 
I think we're all better than uh, than the, our, our opponents that we're going to be facing, and we just got to go prove it, you know. So I think we definitely have the upper hand on the talent that we face, and uh, now it's time to go show that, you know. Yeah, and does it make it even a little bit more special, you know, having it on New Year's Eve? Like, it's a party, man. You know, you get to have your fight and then celebrate in a, you know, different country. Like, the whole vibe of just New Year's in Japan uh, for MMA is also a big deal. Yeah, I mean, we're spending Christmas and New Year's out there. So right. it's just like, man, my family and I are going out there. And, uh, you know, it, it is special. It's something that I've wanted for, I mean, since in the 90s when uh, the Ring of Fire and all that, Dan Henderson and Anderson and Wanderlei and just the, the legends that came before me uh, that fought out there. It's like, man, one day I want to do that. And that one day is finally here and it's this year, you know, so I'm pumped. Yeah, can't beat it, man. And it's always interesting seeing, you know, fighters go from the ring to the cage or the cage to the ring. And for you, like, obviously something to think about, but do you think it'll be more difficult for your style, you know, going to the ring or something that'll be fine or better? Just how are you assessing it that way? Yeah, no, I mean, I've, I've you know, the only strange thing is going to be when, like, they're pushing you off the rope, right? Mm -hmm. Like, someone else touching you, you're going to be like, what the hell? Like, get off <laughs> me, you know? <laughs> but... No, it's definitely going to be an adjustment. Um, but, I mean, that's where, that's where you got to be uncomfortable to get better, right? And so the uncomfortability of, like, training and, like, finding new ways to win and uh, finding new techniques to add on is challenging. But you got to be up for a challenge when you're, when you're this long into the game and you got to have something new to spark your interest. And right now, everything's, like, new to me, so it's, it's clicking and it's, like, it's exciting, you know? Well, yeah, I mean, I bet it's exciting to be able to, you know, do the soccer kicks and stumps, all the downed striking. Like, is that uh, a big excitement for you? More violence, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I thought that anyway when I'm in Bellator. It's just like now I'm, I'm not going to get called for it, you know, yeah. like, uh, but I get to be a little more violent, um, which I like, you know, I'm, I'm the younger brother of, uh, of six, you know, so it's just like I got beat up all the time and stomped out anyway by my brother, so... <laughs> you know now i get to return the favor to people <laughs> absolutely man and you mentioned kind of some of the earlier days uh, in japan the pride guys and whatnot w were the ones you mentioned some of your favorites or uh, any guys specifically that you liked watching the most oh yeah i mean the first person that caught my attention and fighting uh just because i grew up with them and seen them every day in the wrestling room when i was born pretty since i was born you know was dan henderson uh you know my my dad had um we've been part of his dad's wrestling program my dad wrestled for his dad i mean we just were lifelong um uh um you know um grew up together in his in his in his dad's wrestling um facility you know so it's been good you know and that's the guy that's been sparking my interest in mma and wanting to fight out in japan and then once he fought wanderlei i really liked mm. that wanderlei fight and i became a fan of wanderlei then too and then and then anderson and pro cop and just all the legends that fought out there, you know, for sure. Aoki and all those guys, man. I mean, the, even the Japanese fighters, right? Like those guys, you know, cemented themselves in the MMA history and became, you know, legends in their own making. Yeah, exactly. A lot of names you can't really go wrong with there, man. So very fun times yeah. and, you know, continuing to do great stuff over there now. And in your opponent, uh, Su Chul Kim, he's uh, been a fun guy. He just had a great win in his last fight was an upset over Ugi Kubo, who's also fighting on the card. Um, I mean, have you gotten to do any like studying yet of him and uh, know much about him? Just getting ready for the fight or still getting into that? Yeah, I think he's a very similar fight to the last guy I fought, you know, Marzola. Just, you know a guy that keeps coming forward. I mean, luckily I got Cub Swanson to bounce some ideas off of because he fought Doo Hoo Choi, you know, that's like a Korean super, the Korean super <laughs> boy. And so it's just like, man, like <laughs> if I got this guy rocked with I, you know, they're going to be zombies and keep coming forward, you know? So, uh, you know, so we got some ideas to bounce off of and whatever, you know, like chipping away at them. Don't try to, if you, happens all take advantage of it but you know, it just keeps calling. take it down in one swing yeah yeah man and yeah. 
You know, one of the more interesting dynamics, too, about uh, just fighting over there is, you know, they don't score the fights round by round. So that's another kind of adjustment I'm sure you'll be thinking about, even though you don't want to go to decision anyway. But is that uh, just how you feel about that scoring fights as a whole opposed to round by round? Like, do you prefer that or uh, will that be a big adjustment? Yeah, that's what I was actually asking my coach right now. I said, hey, do they, they, they score the fight in its entirety, right? He's like, no, I think it's round by round when I was reading the rules. I was like, no, I think they judge the fight in, in its entirety. And then he's like, oh, I'm going to have to reread on that. because <laughs> We just got the rules on two, on uh, Monday. And so we're looking over on the judging and everything like that. So, I mean, I prefer the whole fight because – and I prefer the way they, they judge the fight because they know what they're looking into. It's like, okay, whoever puts the most martial arts in a fight is going to win the fight. And that's what I've said for years, you know, like who's ever – who's ever showing the most martial arts should win the MMA fight. Like not a guy that's just playing defensive and playing, playing counter. Like that's not martial arts. That's just being defensive. If you're going out there showing wrestling, showing jujitsu, showing kickboxing, Muay Thai, showing boxing and showing defense and putting everything together, that guy should win the fight. Like he showed we're mixed martial arts, not who's landed the bigger power shots. Who's almost got this guy hurt. Like obviously damage is a, key factor Mm -hmm. but how much martial arts are you putting in into that into that uh that fight you know so i like the rules i like the way they judge it i'm a big fan of the way they judge and the and you know the way they 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 put it all together yeah man and so with like all that in mind like do you have a perfect situation like in terms of the outcome like a type of finish that you'd want obviously i'm sure it'd be fun to get one of these you know knockouts with like the kicks or something that you can't get in bellator but uh, do you care about that kind of thing you're just going out there to get a great performance i'm going out there to cement my legacy (laughs) and 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 i um where mma originated you know i want to show as much martial arts as i can in this fight i want to become you know a fan favorite out there if i become a fan favorite out there i mean there's no denying my my legacy in MMA, you know, and then building my name out in Japan. I mean, it's been my dream to go out there and fight and continue to go out there and fight. But first and foremost, it comes with performing. Yeah, absolutely, man. It's been quite a journey for you. And like, it's kind of crazy, you know, next August, we'll hit the 10 uh, year mark as a pro for you, man. So like, are you kind of at where you thought you'd be? By this stage, you know, when you kind of look back on things and when you started out, is this where you were uh, envisioning things to end up? Yeah, I mean, um, I, that's crazy, you know, like <laughs> it doesn't even feel that, that long. But, you know, I, I'm just thankful for every opportunity that, that I've had and the people that have I've been surrounded with and, um, you know, continue to surround ourselves with. Like, you know, it's just it's truly humbling. You know, I never thought that I'd be in the position that I am now for sure with the team that I have, like, that's awesome, you know, and how successful we've gotten as a team together and built together. I mean, I know MMA is an individual sport, and a lot of people say you got to be selfish, but when you got a team that we do, it's just like, yeah, Cub, TJ, Brian, Tiki Ghost, and Paul Herrera, Joe Daddy. I mean, like, the list goes on with the guys that we've surrounded ourselves with, the uh, Poel Diaz, you know, Felipe Del Monica, Daryl Christian, like, just a lot of, you know, St. John Bosco wrestling team, Aaron Pico, Georgie Kirkconi, and like Syed Awad, like all these guys had had Long list. huge impacts <laughs> in, my, yeah, in my career that we've all worked together and built each other up and taken ideas off each other. And we all have similar fighting style. Like we rubbed off on each other, like our fighting style and have improved and, and created a hybrid of martial arts that, you know, people get to enjoy watching today, you know, so i would never thought we'd be able to take it this like the idea of taking it the, as far as we've taken it, it never even crossed my mind until people like tell me you know like yeah. it's crazy what we've done you know it's like yeah that's not what i've done it's what we've done mm. uh you know as a team you know yeah man it is a it is a crazy ride and for what you have done though Juan, like a lot of great moments and a lot of titles all these accomplishments man and more to come but when you look at things right now is there a moment that you're most proud of or you know, happy about when you look back on the journey? Yeah, I mean, um, obviously coming off your losses, like having a, that's where like you really rely on your team, right? Like to kind of still give you that confidence to go into the next fight because it is heartbreaking. You know, like when you lose, you feel like you let everyone down, but 
at, when they, when you see them the next day or the next week or the next month, they just lift you up and say, hey, you got to get back on that horse. You know, you, you can't be afraid to jump right back into it, you know. And and so to build each other up like that, like, you know, it's, it's, it's cool. It, it's a cool experience, you know. Yeah, for sure, man. And obviously there's still plenty, you know, to accomplish, like I was saying. But I'm just curious, man, like, is there any idea that you have on, like, how much longer you want to fight for? I'm sure you could go for a good long time and you don't want to look at the end necessarily, but is that something that you maybe think about at all? No, I, I, I hate to put a time limit on anything, you know, because I go fight by fight, you know, and uh, I'm a heavy believer. I, I have my relationship with the Lord and, you know, God willing to, when that time comes, he, he'll let me know, you know, I've, I've this, this, this journey for me has been all about constant prayer and relationship with the Lord. And so like, I just tell him when this door's out, uh, when this door's ready to be shut, just shut it, and I won't, and I won't look back, you know. So when that time comes, I'll know when it comes, you know, because every door of opportunity that I've walked through have shut in before, and I walk away from it, you know. So I don't try to chase it, and I, I move on, you know. All right, so you're saying it won't be one of these guys who leaves and then comes back and leaves and comes back again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so you I see know. that a lot in MMA. <laughs> right, right, and then that's why I'm, I've taken the path that I've taken, you know. And, taking the advice that's been coming my way, like, because I truly believe in the people that I'm around and, you know, their advice means a lot to me because they've been down this road before me, you know, and they're just trying to get me, navigate me through the road of less difficulty, you know, let least resistance. Right. So that's why I have a lot of guys that fought before around me, you know? Yeah, absolutely, man. Makes plenty of sense. So, all right, Juan. Well, I'll leave with one last thing here, man, uh, before I let you go. Appreciate it as always, my man. And uh, another big fight coming up, though, before uh, New Year's and your fights uh, in the Bantamweight division, one of your past opponents, uh, Rafion Stotts and then Sabatello on the other end of the tournament. They're going to, you know, figure things out there over in Bellator. Uh, prediction on that one, you know, obviously experience with Stotts, but just how you think it's going to unfold. I don't know, man. I mean, I'm not a big fan of either or, so I, like, I don't really even care who wins that fight, you know? It's like, that's not martial arts. That's just a clown show, you know? And so I'm, I'm more interested into the Magomedov and the Apache fight. Like, I'm really more interested in watching that fight than, like, I'll probably not even watch the Rafion and Sabatello fight. It's like, you know, I don't like guys that, like, just run their mouth to, to try to get publicity. That's, that's, I'm not a fan of that, you know? Yeah, and yeah, there was definitely been a lot going on <laughs> between them in that regard yeah. so yeah it's like shut up and just do you know perform like that's all that matters you know yeah. so like they try to show a highlight of rufion in my fight and it was like it was all highlights of me you know until he got that kick it was like you know it was like whatever but um yeah i mean you know if i had to pick i i'm going with sabatello which is from the same college and wrestling at the same program so I think once he takes him down, Rufion's not going to get up, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting, man, since you did mention, you know, the the finish in uh, your Stotts fight, like, have seen that as many times I have, like, still feels kind of early to me. Uh, and, you know, having had all this time now since it, do you still feel that way? I know you kind of didn't no, agree at no, that time. I, I, I believe I, I have, a hundred, like, Mike Beltran, he's, he's, a, he's legit in the sport. Like, he's one of the best referees in the sport. He knew where I was injured and said, hey, man, like, that's it. You know, I, I have full belief in any referee that goes in there. They're, they're there to keep us safe and to keep – to fight – live to the fight another day, you know. So I have no complaints about it. I mean, he did his job, and I'm thankful for it. I'm thankful that I didn't – I took as least damage as possible, you know. Like, I know some guys said, oh, I wish this would have happened, but I wouldn't have this opportunity fighting in Japan if, if it didn't go the way it was supposed to go, you know. That's why I have full belief, like, things happen for a reason, you know? Money comes and goes, but experiences like this, you can't buy, you know? Yeah, totally. Great outlook, man, and uh, love it. So I'll let you get on with it then, Juan. I mean, very excited to see, uh, you know, you fight always, man, but this is a big deal. So congrats on getting it. I mean, like I said, we talked into oh, yeah. existence a little bit, man, for years ago <laughs> to now, you know, come right. here. So it's really right. cool. So you know, it's uh, happening. Yeah, man. So, oh, yeah, I'm pumped. Congrats. Looking forward to it. Best of luck with uh, everything leading up to it. The safe travels. Enjoy the new year and Christmas uh, over there, man. That'll be fun, too. Like just a big it's a big event, you know, for you. So very cool. But uh, it is. It's I mean, it's it's history in the making, right? Yeah, totally, yeah. man. So. All right. Well, I'll let you get on with it. Appreciate you, man. Uh, I'm sure we'll catch up again in the future sometime. All right. Thanks. Drink. I appreciate it, man. Take care.
Joining us now, it's featherweight bad boy, Ren Hiramoto. All right. Well, Ren, congratulations on the uh, recent victory, man. Just uh, how you doing? Good to see you here today. How are you doing, Hiramoto-san? I'm going to win the victory. How are you doing now? How are you doing now? そうですね。あの、まあ、すごい、あの、勝利して、嬉しい自分もありつつ、あの、このままのトレーニングの来年は、と勝ち越して、一気にスターダムをこう、駆け上がるんだっていう、す強い気持ち。気持ちがより勝利したからこそあるあるありますねそういう気持ちが。Well, I'm happy with the victory from the last fight, but more than anything, I'm more highly motivated to continue training more harder and in next year strive and climb up to the stardoms, and that's the the motivation I created from this win. Absolutely, man. And uh, well, we saw that you just got a fancy new watch. I mean, was this a celebration gift uh, to yourself, or did you just uh, feel like you needed a watch? Was it something you were planning on doing regardless of、uh, the result? <laughs> えっとどうですかね。最近なんかかっこいい、えー、腕時計を買ったみたいですけども、あれは買った自分に対するご褒美ですか。それともそれと関係なく買おうと決めたもんでしょうか。いやまああのえっ、ー、とまあ格闘かとしてなんかこうた単純な夢というかやっぱこう格闘技で稼いであのロレックスをつけてランボルギーニに乗るっていうわかりやすい夢をあの小学校の時からあのあったんでまあ一つ夢が叶ったかなという感じです。Well, I always had a dream ever since elementary school when I was in elementary school that I wanted to be successful as a 格闘家 which is a MMA fighter and buy ロレックス。And by Lamborghini. So that's my dream. So, you know, I got, I achieved one finally, is how I feel right now. <laughs> All right. Yeah. One step closer to、uh, making these a、uh, reality, man. So, very nicely done. And、uh, what was very nicely done was obviously the performance you had against、uh, Dominator. I mean, you were the dominant one out there. You kind of stole his nickname with、uh, that victory and that performance. I mean, just looking back on it now, like, How happy were you with it in terms of you know, what you accomplished in there and went out to do?、Uh, just your feelings on that performance now, having had time to you know, take it in. I'm sure you've watched it a bit too. えとこの前の試合はドミネーター相手に結局ドミネートしたんで彼のニックネームを取り上げた形の試合になるようになったんですけども<笑>、えー、具体的にあの試合でやれてよかったなと思うこととか例えばまた反省点とかもうちょっとこう噛み砕くとどういった感じになるでしょうか、まあ、そうですね KO は正直 KO はいつでも出会えた状況ではあったんですけど、自分の中では、まあ、あの、次なるステップアップっていうか、まあ、試合をしながらレッスンをしてるような感じで、またこう、MMA を、ああいう、なんていうんですかね、あの、支配した試合をこう、3ラウンド通して15分間できたっていうのは、やっぱ自分の中で、すごい、あの、いい、あの、かなり強みのある経験になったのじゃないかなと思いました。Well, obviously, I was looking for a knockout and it's nice to have a KO, but at the same time, that's the fight that I was able to dominate for the entire three rounds. So it was almost like I was fighting, but going through a learning lesson s at the same time. So, in that sense, I think that it was a very good fight for me. Yeah, no doubt about it, man. I mean, you didn't manage to get the knockout. And I want to ask, like, were you surprised about that? Because You might have set like some kind of MMA record just across the sport overall for knockdowns because <laughs> I don't know. I couldn't count, keep track of how many you got on him with the, the first round, the third round. Like it was very surprising to me that, you know, he, he wasn't finished there.、Uh, how surprised were you? I'm sure、uh, more than all of us. <laughs> えっ、ー、と、ちょっと彼も言ってるのは、えっ、ー、と、細かくはカウントしてないんですけども、もしかしたら MMA 仕様で、あんだけいっぱいノックダウンを奪っているのに、<笑>最終的にはノックアウトできなかったのは初めてなんじゃないかっていうぐらいノックダウンを奪ったと思うんですけども、<笑>そこまでやってノックアウトできなかったってことに関してはどう思いますかそうですね。あれはまあ、でも向こうの、本来であれば、向こうのセコンド陣から、あの、タオルというか、あの、バトンが投げられて、TKO で止められるんじゃないかなとは、あのもう3ラウンド目、相手選手もふらついてはいたんで、あの思ったんですけど、まあ、僕の中で最後まであれをこう
別に KO というか、隙を見せずにあれをやり続けることに意味があったんで、まあ、すごい恐怖は見せれたのかなと思います、ファイターとしての。Well, in terms of a stoppage, I think it was his cornerman's responsibility to throw a towel, but I guess it's a button in the rising. But from my point of view, you know, I was able to, to control and show everything. So I was able to show a, a fear to my you know, opponent、so, and also to the fans that I can show you that type of a style of fight. So, in that sense, I think it was very good. Yeah, I mean, very patient, very methodical approach by you. And it was very clear that he did not want anything to do with、uh, your striking. And I mean, did he even hit you in like the first two rounds? He obviously was able to kind of, he knew he needed to turn up in the third round. But, you know, watching it, I feel like he didn't land a single thing on you in the first two rounds. <laughs> ありましたって聞いてるんですけどもまあ全部こうなんていうんですかね重ねりっていうかこうほんと全部こう自分のそのパーチを当てるためのスペースを作ってそこにドミネーター選手がこうパーチで入ってきたその空間を作ってあげて
パンクロックを表現したいなという気持ちです。<笑> <laughs> I, I consider myself, myself as an anarchist. So it's sort of like a punk rock kind of、uh, music scene, you know, the mentality that I have to rebel against the world. <laughs> All right. Yes. Very fitting. Very punk rock indeed, man. And you, know, you got the tattoos to go with it. So I want to ask you about those because it's great artwork you got, man. Like, do you, what, what was your first tattoo? And then I got to know which one is your favorite if you could、uh, pick one because I know you got many. タトゥーいっぱいあるんですけども、一番初めにつけたタトゥーは何かというのと、今自分の中にあるタトゥーで何が一番好きですかという質問なんですけど。一番最初のタトゥーはこの右手のファイヤーパターンタトゥーで。That's my first pattern. That's my first tattoo, which is a fire pattern tattoo. 一番好きっていうか、まあ、全部入れ墨は全部お気に入りであるんですけど、えっと、海外の人からやっぱすごい受けるのはこの。首に入ってるカクタスジャックってあのトラビス・スコットの,、うん、のレベルのタトゥーが一番あの海外の人にはすごい受け,受けるかなっていう印象です。Well, in terms of like、uh, fans in overseas, I feel like this cactus jack、uh, tattoo I got, I think it's probably the favorite from the、uh, overseas fans. <laughs> yes, very nice indeed, man. And yeah, I only have some on my arm here, but I gotta ask like, Are the neck ones the most painful? I would imagine it wouldn't feel very good、uh, when those are getting done. I think it's a little bit of 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 a little Well, it was a sore, and at the same time, and every time I, I like swallow my saliva, you know, it, it moves. So it kind of adds to the soreness, and I was actually even scared. However, in terms of pain itself, I think the back was much more painful than the throat.、Mm, okay. Yeah. I mean, more, more to work with there, a larger surface area. So that certainly makes sense, man. But、uh, no fun either way. It's, it's fun to look at them afterwards, but the process is、uh, the least fun part, right? <laughs> <笑>まあ基本的に背中はやっぱり大きいですからね、痛いと思いますし。そうですね。えっと、背中の筋彫りは1回でやったんですけど、11時間ぐらいかかって、あの、失神しました。<笑> well, my first back tattoo, it took about 11 hours to finish, and I lost my consciousness. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's,、uh, <laughs> that makes sense, man. That's crazy. So, a long time indeed, but. Anyway, Ren, as for、uh, the MMA stuff, man, I know that、uh, it was it last year, I believe, you did some training、uh, over in America with、uh, Rufus Sport, right? And Sergio Pettis and those guys.、Uh, I know, obviously, a great bunch to train with. So I just got to ask, you know, like, how was it working with them? Like, how much did you learn? I don't know if you did preparation with them for this camp or、uh, if you're planning to again, but just like, what was that experience、uh, like with them? How was it working with Rufus Sport? まあ、全体的にそこでの経験ってどんな感じでしょうかってそうですね。やっぱこう、セルジオとの出会いは自分の格闘技人生のターニングポイントになったというか、あの、彼がいたからすごいアメリカは特別なものだったし、格闘家としてのあり方をこう、真髄というかこう、すべてこう、教えてくれた人なんで、またすぐ会いたいなという気持ちはあります。Well, I'm telling you this that meeting Sergio Petas is like a turning point of my career. You know, he taught me everything about the approach towards the MMA fights and everything else. So that is something i t s very life changing for me. So I'm really looking forward to go back there again to meet and to work out with him soon. Yeah, absolutely, man. You know, he's a great striker himself, as you are. And,、uh, you know, when you're a great striker like that, you obviously kind of need to learn the elements of. Uh, wrestling and like the defense, the takedown defense to go along with it so that you can get the strikes off maybe more effectively. And, you know, we really saw that in、uh, your fight here with Dominator 2, where defended him very well, got on top of him in some moments, defending like how much did Sergio maybe help you with,、uh, you know, some of these techniques to defend wrestling better and just how big of a focus has that been for you to, you know, add that to your game, obviously. えっと、セルジオも、まあ、どちらかというとストライカーであってそうなるとやっぱりこうレスリングのテイクダウンをこう防御するディフェンスっていうのがやっぱり、うん、キックっていうのがやっぱり一番キーの一つになってくると思うんですけどもそういった点でも、えー、前回の試合はそのドミネーター選手に対してしっかりと全部タックル切れてましたが
、えー、とそういったことでは、セルジオとは何か話したりとか、いろんなどんな練習をしたとか、そういったこと何かありますかやっぱこう自分のレスリング力をついたら間違いなくあのアメリカの修行機関で基礎というか、あの、あの、すごい仕分け上げられたんで、あの、僕はどっちかというとそのグラップリングのスタイルがあのレスラーよりというか、あの、なんていうんですかね、あの、北米のレスリングの技術がやっぱ自分の打撃のスタイルにこうマッチするなっていうのもあるんで、あの、やっぱその、なんていうんですかね、ストライカーだからこそレスリングはすごい、あの、大事だし、あの、セルジオもやっぱすごいレスリングが上手いし、あの、日曜日とか、あの、練習が休みの日もセルジオはずっと練習で付き合ってくれてたんで、あの、すごい、今だって活かせるようになってきたと思います。Well, I mean, obviously, wrestling is very important, and Sergio works very hard on the wrestling itself. And my wrestling is something I learned in America at first. They really taught me what the wrestling is all about, and they really molded me. And, you know, really, I went、really、through a hardship there. But Sergio, same thing, and because he's a striker, but also he feel, realized that wrestling is very important. He's a very good wrestler as well. And even the Sundays, When the, there was no training, Sergio was nice enough to, to train with me, on, and, and I learned a lot from that too. So, you know, when I look back on those days, yes, that, that was the days that I really started learning what wrestling in MMA is all about. Yeah, definitely saw that with the last performance, man. It's very cool to see, you know, the growth of Ren Hiramoto in MMA. So, man, I got to wonder, like, When do you want to fight next? You obviously didn't take very much damage in the last fight, so I'm sure you're ready to go whenever. But, like, when are you hoping to? Do you have somebody in mind?、Uh, what are you thinking right now for、uh, the next time we can see you? Do you think next time we can see you? Do you think next time we can see you? Do you think next time we can see you? Do you think next time we can see you? Do you think next time we can see you? Do you think next time we can see you? Do you think next time we can see you? Do you think next time we can s この試合感をかなり掴んできたからこそやりたいっていうのもあるんですけど、やっぱ僕はアメリカで修行をこうちょっと、また今のタイミングで行ったら見える景色がまた違うんじゃないかなっていうのもあるんで、もっとこう強くなりたいですね。Well, I mean, remember, I was injured before the fight, so I re injured my foot too. So I have to heal that injury first. And of course, now I'm on the back on the fighting mode and I like to get on this momentum and fight as soon as possible. However, I still would like to go back to America and train because right now, at this stage of my career, if I go back to America, I think I can see a different scenery, you know, in terms of different training and stuff like that. So I would like to do that too. Yeah, very good point, man. And、uh, definitely a lot to kind of, you know, worry about and take care of,、uh, first of all, right? So that makes sense. And I guess that kind of answers my next question, maybe a little bit, because obviously the focus is continuing to grow in MMA. but Man, at the same time, Ren, like everybody knows about your fantastic kickboxing background, just how good of a striker you are. And, you know, we recently saw Floyd Mayweather come back and fight in a boxing match exhibition for Ryzen. And then Koji fought, you know, his bodyguard, all this crazy stuff happening with the exhibition boxing scene、uh, happening in Ryzen again and whatnot. So, like, I'm curious, are you interested in like getting in on that at all? What you were in Hawaii for the press conference, correct me if I'm wrong, but is it interest you at all to be a part of these, these boxing matches and stuff that's going on in Ryzen? I'm a MMA fighter, 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 I'm a メイウェザーでも誰でもいいですけどもそういったボクシングの歴史だとかストライキングのルールでの歴史みたいなのに今の時点では興味ありますかでもまあ僕やっぱ MMA がすごい好きなんであのボクシングはあんまり興味ないですね。<笑> well, I really like MMA, so I'm not really interested in boxing at all. Yeah, totally fair. I think,、uh, I don't think I think we want to see you continue with MMA too, but、uh, it's just one of those options now, right? It's nice to have options. Of course, he is an MMA fighter, so I want to see you next time, but I want to ask you a different option. I don't want to fight. And I think it all depends on the fight money, which is a purse I'm going to earn too. Yes, yes, that's、uh, definitely very fair and well put. So... I mean, when we look back on it, though, Ren, now at this point,、uh, you know, four fights in on your first winning streak in MMA, when you look back at when you first got into MMA, like 
how difficult was the transition for you at first? やっぱ、やっぱ、やっぱ、やっぱ、やっぱ、やっぱ、やっぱ、やっぱ、やっぱ、やっぱ、やっぱ、やっぱ、やっぱ、やっぱ、やっぱ、やっぱ、やっぱ
Well, definitely, I would like to be a UFC champion, you know, but I would like to establish myself as an absolute figure in Japan first. And they will go to UFC and beat all these top guys and became a champion. So I'm watching myself sort of like a movie, you know, and, but I think I can achieve that. Yeah, I mean, hey, man, look, we've already seen some rising champions do that. Yuri Prohaska is the most recent case, you know, a light heavyweight. I'm sure you've been watching him a little bit. まあ、Yes, I'm really like Iri because he is a type of fighter that gives you this sense of a budo, you know. So I really I like that. So I'm looking forward to be like him in the UFC. Definitely, man. Can't go wrong with that either. Your guys' fighting style is always very fun to watch. So good, a good career path to try and follow uh, what Yuri's doing. So yeah, definitely can't go wrong there, man. But all right, Ren, we can leave it off there. Uh, appreciate you taking the time. Oh, so much. Great getting to chat with you for the first time. And congrats again on the uh, great performance against Dominator. And congrats on the winning streak now in MMA. Good stuff there. Looking forward to uh, what you got next, whenever that may be. Hope you heal up. Just continue enjoying uh, the, the splendors of the victory and whatnot, man. So I appreciate you. Big uh, arigato gozaimashita. And just hope you have a great rest of your day, sir. あ、今日、まあ、今日はいろいろありがとうございました。というと、練習、練習して、まあ、これからもキャリア、あの、楽しみにしてますので、頑張ってください。ということで。Thank you very much. Okay. And last but not least, it is the mercenary AJ McKee. All right, AJ, what's up, man? How are things? I'm tired and sore, bro. Yeah, it looks like you're chilling. <laughs> I'm about to take a nap after this. I hear you. I won't keep you too long. Then don't want to uh, disrupt nap time. Very important. <laughs> <laughs> Good. So how was the trip to Japan, man? Obviously, a lot of crazy things going on. Very cool. Uh, I mean, sure, it was a good time. Yeah, it was a super, super awesome trip, man. Everyone's so respectful out there. Um, the combat's world, they just, they love their combat sports. You know what I mean? So they, uh, they glorify... <clears throat> The fighters, the athletes, just to a whole nother level, the the respect that they have for the athletes is just, there's nothing like it. It's real. Yeah, absolutely. Was that your first time uh, getting to go there just for anything? Yeah, yeah. All right, so did you get too much exploring or was it like, all right, just a couple of days for the press conference and stuff? <laughs> just a couple of days yeah. for the press conference. But I hopped on a train and went, did a little bit of clothes shopping. That's about it. There you go. There you go, man. Uh, and I mean, what was the press conference itself like? Because obviously they kind of, it's just different, right? It's different over there with how they do things, especially compared to, I guess, some of the more traditional U.S. press conferences that we see. Yeah, it was different, man. It was it was a packed press conference, which was crazy. I almost wanted to say arena, but it was like an arena. You know what I mean? There's just so many people there just to hear what you have to say. It was just different, man. It was really different. Everyone, you know what I mean? They're so tuned into what you're saying and what you're doing and it was uh it was probably one of the more serious press conferences i would say <laughs> do you like that compared to i guess kind of the, the wackiness we can get in between you know certain personalities uh, over here <laughs> yeah i don't mind you know the, the the entertainment aspect of it on our end over here is it's always fun you get to fuel the fire talk a little bit of smack and it gives the the, the fans something to kind of look into a little bit you know <clears throat> yeah definitely always stories for every fight and whatnot and speaking of entertainment though man uh the last win congratulations on that against spike carlisle some crazy stuff and you know i feel like this is a common thought about your performance but it seemed like you were really really trying to make a statement with that one he's just a very very tough guy to put away obviously but would you say that was kind of the goal there was to go out and just absolutely dominate the guy the way you did yeah it was just dominate you know i wanted pure dominance um i wanted to finish him you know just because he, he was a guy that hadn't been finished by anybody before. So, uh, I, I like I, it's always about the statement, you know what I mean? Go in there and leave a statement. So, it was it was a fun fight, great victory. Um, just back to the drawing board, you know, bigger, better, and uh, keep leveling up. That, that's the whole motto. Every fight, switch up and change up so they don't know what to expect. Yeah, for sure. Keep them on the toes. And, I mean, that fight gave us a great, uh, a great 
still shot you know the photo of him like bleeding <laughs> next to you and everything like i'm sure you've got yeah. some uh personal favorite photos from your career and everything but where does that one rank that's a great shot right there <laughs> um when i actually saw that picture i was like oh that's a sweet shot <laughs> i was like i wish i had a shot like that and i was like oh well he's a bit bloody you don't want to be bloody like that <laughs> but uh yeah man the photographers they they capture some of the craziest moments that uh that we're under in those in those times of, of battle and uh i think our facial expression said all oh, you know what i mean one face it it can just be a grunt just like like i'm trying to give it everything i've got and then the next one it's like oh i got a little finesse here so you, the smile comes out you know what i mean you just you get to see so much in our facial yeah. expressions that's the contrast and like everything MA can bring out of you right yeah <laughs> it's crazy man and I mean speaking of those feelings like with this opportunity you know fighting in a, the Ryzen ring and being a part of this big thing with Bellator versus Ryzen and all that like was this something that you ever expected to be a part of because obviously Bellator and Ryzen have been working together for a couple of years now and we've seen fighters go back and forth obviously Kyoji's the best example as he's been champ of both promotions and whatnot but like, what was the feeling like for you just getting presented with the idea and the opportunity? Then once it was made official and all, like, super exciting for you? Or was it just like another fight? How are you treating it? No, for me, it's it's super exciting. You know, since I was young, I've always spoke about unifying the belts, bringing all the fighters together and uh, seeing who the best of the best is. So with this opportunity at hand, I, I think it's it's phenomenal. You know what I mean? It, it just goes to show that, once again, the fighters – are the fighters, you know what I mean? And, and where we make the organization and it doesn't matter where you're at, but you know, some organizations, they have the best fighters in the world period, regardless where you're at. And, uh, yeah, just being able to test myself against another organization's champ, um, in a new, in a new division. <clears throat> um, I think it's, it's, it's dope. You know what I mean? It gets to show me where I stand at the 155 pound division. This dude's no rollover. He's no slouch. So, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to going in there and having some fun. And I get to soccer kick people in the head <laughs> legally. Awesome, dude. I don't know, can't beat that. It's a level up in violence a little bit, isn't it? <laughs> definite, definite. <laughs> Maybe two, three levels. Yeah, yeah, a couple there. <laughs> and also New Year's New Year's Eve, man. Like just that's a big thing in Japan and MMA in general, like always kind of a big deal for them over there, uh, going back years and years ago to kind of the start of the sport. But I mean, on top of that, like kind of a vacation for you at the same time Juan I was talking to earlier said he'll be there for Christmas I don't know if he'll be there at the same time and then obviously over the New Year's part but is that like a cool thing for you to get to have not only everything that's going on with you know the idea of this event but the fact that it's for a New Year's show like makes it even bigger definitely um New Year's has always been I, I've always enjoyed New Year's but being able to fight on New Year's in a different country it's like that's like cream of the crop, you know what I mean? And it's Japan. Like since I was a kid, the risen, the pride, you know what I mean? The pride, all those glory days. So um, for me, it's just, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. And uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't rather be on any other place in the world unless I'm on a mountain snowboarding for New Year's. <laughs> oh, there you go, man. Are you big into snowboarding? I didn't know this. Oh yeah. I love snowboarding. It's cars and snowboarding for me, mainly cars snowboarding is just like a fun little hobby i do right it's a seasonal thing you yeah, know yeah i mean yeah can't do that as much as uh, driving or things with cars <laughs> so i hear you there that's year round <laughs> yeah totally man i mean my favorite thing about snowboarding and whatnot is like it's just an escape man you know once you get good enough obviously it sucks a little bit in the beginning if you're not very good but <laughs> just getting out on the mountain and kind of disconnecting obviously from the world it's a it's a great escape for sure yeah and it's it's a beautiful scene every time man you can just sit there on the top of the mountain and look over at all the other mountains you know what i mean it's just it's a beautiful sight so you know you got to sit back sometimes and and just enjoy the view that's at hand and uh snowboarding there's no other place you know what i mean you get tired all right let me sit down people are flying past yeah. you and you're just chilling you know what i mean in your own world so um yeah snowboarding's awesome man i love it yeah totally and are you, are you somebody who goes for the jumps or you kind of take it a little more chill than that oh yeah i'm hitting every feature possible <laughs> If I see a feature, I'm going for it. If I have the momentum and the speed or not, we're going to figure it out. <laughs> I think we should maybe not tell Bellator about this. <laughs> oh, dude, my first season, I was throwing backflips. Really? Doing backflip 180s, yeah. So Bellator is aware. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's 
It's like, don't hurt yourself, AJ. And I'm like, yeah, I'll be good until I hurt myself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, that's awesome, man. So like this is usually a question I leave kind of for the end, but I mean, just springboarding off of it. Like if you never got into MMA, would you try to be a professional snowboarder? Is that something you would Jeez, do? I'd, honestly, I'd probably try to be a, a race car driver. Okay. I mean, that's what I'm looking forward to doing and settling down, retirement, and just try to get on the track. Because it's, it's the same type of adrenaline you get from fighting. The difference is you're on a track, you know what I mean? Mm. The angles, the angles, the precision, the timing, like all of that is, is what makes a great fighter. And it's also what makes a great driver. So um, for me, it's just learning how to drive. I right. need to learn how to drive. <laughs> I need hours <laughs> on the track. Like I've spent hours in the gym. Yeah. So would you do, would you think like NASCAR or something else? Nah, I got F1. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Full <laughs> force, baby. <laughs> no, I don't know if I've Full heard force. Pe people say that. Hey, honestly, yeah. I would be happy with any F series, just yeah. making it into an F series. But um, yeah, outside of that, man, if I if I wasn't fighting, I would say I would be military of some sort, probably okay. some special forces or something. I always that's where the name mercenary. There came we go. From, you know, so yeah, it'd probably be I'd be out there serving my country, fighting for my family. Got to be a fighter somewhere. Right, exactly. But yeah, I don't have to think about these other options because you're a pretty damn good fighter as is, man. So <laughs> <laughs> with that in mind, I mean... Still always a pondering thought. Yes, <laughs> of course, of course. It's good to have options. So, <laughs> But yeah, Satoshi is the next guy in your way, the next one you're looking to get out, the lightweight champ, man. So like whenever it's a non-title fight but you're going against a champion, I'm sure you know you still treat it as a title fight. Anyway, that's how at least I look at him. So... Great guy, one of the best in the world, like you were saying, along with yourself, and a very, very unique challenge. Obviously, amazing jujitsu. I mean, first of all, though, just like how much do you know about him? Have you been following him a little bit uh, leading up to this? Um, leading up to it, I just I've been watching a few of his fights, trying to scope out what he does, how he how he uh, how he um, acts in the cage, what he does, body movement, body language, things like that. Um, yeah, dude's got phenomenal jujitsu. <laughs> you know what I mean? So uh, I I've never fought anybody with this caliber jujitsu. Um, it's going to be intriguing to see where our wrestling stands. You know what I mean? Obviously, I've been wrestling my whole life. So he uh, he, he wrestles, but it's not like your traditional wrestling. You know what I mean? It's more of like a grappler wrestling. So I think the, the big key for me is going to be trying to neutralize that and uh, – capitalize on his way out you know what i mean get a nice soccer kick in the way out or something <laughs> yeah exactly catch him there and that's always the most intriguing thing to me about like these types of matchups for you guys when you're going against the serious specialists like him you know like he's getting better at doing everything but obviously what he's very best at is you know his ground game and submission ability so for you like when you approach that how much do you like want to play around and test yourself you know going in the grappling with him is it like a little bit just so you can get that confirmation that i can hang there or do you like want to beat him in that area how do you kind of look at it because obviously some would say not the smartest way to go about it when that's what people are going to favor him in that area i mean obviously you want to test the waters a bit but i feel like all that comes from the training camp you know what i mean Tr trusting in my teammates trusting in my coaches and uh just knowing they're putting me through the trenches and the ringer every day, you know what I mean? So when it comes time to actually putting myself in that situation, that I'm more than comfortable to uh, feel whatever's at hand, whatever he's trying to pull off. And, yeah, just maneuver through it the best that I can. There you go, man. And but obviously, I'm not trying to go down. Yeah, yeah. Be yeah. like, hey, what's up, Blair? How you doing? You pull guard like, no, on him. Like, no, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. Save that for training together or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can do that after. Yeah, right? for sure. <laughs> but I mentioned the uh, title element with him being the champion, AJ. Like, if you go out there and beat him, though, would you want to, like, challenge to actually become yeah. the champion in Ryzen in a rematch? Or is it just like we'll just do it this way and you know you'll worry about your bellator business and maybe fight for the lightweight title afterward instead in bellator um the titles are always key you know with with the accolades of being a world champ in multiple organizations um my first thing that came to mind was like oh i'm getting another belt so for me <laughs> you know what i mean i'm i'm ah oh, damn it's three five <laughs> like no smack on the knee you know what i mean but for me it's keeping that same mindset that it's it's a championship bout you know um, obviously Bellator has me representing Bellator, um, 
because they feel like I'm the man for the job. Um, so me keeping that in mind is me knowing I'm the man for the job, regardless who has a belt, who has the 155 pound title. I'm the person that's representing Bellator. So it, it's coming in there and, and treating it as if I'm the champ and this is the championship out, you know, um, you know, that to me, it's, it's undefeated. It's a mindset. You know what I mean? It's not really a record. It's, uh, it's what you're capable within yourself. So, you know, I'm, I'm still undefeated in my eyes. I don't care what anybody says. And it ain't no Sean O'Malley undefeated. <laughs> I'm undefeated. All right. <laughs> like we're, we're coming for it. And, uh, yeah, that's the thing, man. I just want to go out there, put on a great show, and bring home that victory um, and get a finish, man. I need a finish. I'm fiending for a finish. All right, there you go. And I mean, many uh, many more ways to do it with the added elements on the ground, too. So uh, what, what would be ideal for you? Would you love, like, one of the soccer kick stomp finishes? Like, because you can't get them in belt or so. That's the one you want. Definitely. <laughs> Dude, if I get, like, a flying knee knockout or a knee knockout or a kick knockout, soccer kick I would be happy with any of those. I, I think the big thing for me is being cognitive of my elbows. Mm. You know, I'm such an elbow striker. When I get in the heat of that moment and I get tired to not throw an elbow is going to be like, all right, dude, you know what I mean? So I, I've been very cognitive of, of it in, uh, in practice, and I'm just trying to, trying to get out of a habit <laughs> that I've had my entire life. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I'm just I'm replacing the elbows with knees, even from, like, the side, like when people right. got you in side control, like you don't need to throw elbows, throw a knee. Oh, wait, this actually reaches. Yeah. So um, it's just making little little adjustments like that. You know, I'm kicking people off of me and then kicking them in the face after mm. versus like before you weren't able to do that. So now it's just like a little double quick tap. You know what I mean? Like a little double tap of the A button. <laughs> there you go. So the, this fight has no elbows because Ryzen, in some of the fights, they will allow the elbows. But for you guys, that's uh, not the case here? I don't believe so. But if they do have elbows, oh, this man's in for a world of trouble. Yeah, because they they have been doing them the last couple of years. So unless like... Oh, say less. Uh, yeah. We're going <laughs> to keep great positive energy of allowing elbows. <laughs> yeah, so we'll put it out there in the atmosphere. So... <laughs> But overall, man, like with the element of the ring too, do you think that's more difficult for your style or do you think it matters at all? Like how do you approach the actual, uh, the ring versus cage? Wrestling wise for me, I would say it's a bit more difficult, but this isn't a fight where I'm trying to go wrestle anyway. Right, so right. It doesn't really matter. You know what I mean, um, I think my style is I know once I get you against the cage, I'm going to get you down. So I, I kind of rely on the cage and, oh, I can drive into a double leg and kind of sit there and wait. Um, in a boxing ring, there's no there's no waiting. You have to get in, you have to cut the corner, and you have to get around immediately. Or you end up in a bad position. So, uh, yeah, the uh, outside of the ring, um, outside of that, I don't really see much. You know, you're able to kind of bounce off of the rings a little bit. Um, not much really going into changing the game plan or anything. Yeah, understandable. And then there's also the, um, you know, the scoring, the fights as a whole, though, opposed to round by round. Is that something that you think about at all or prefer? Like, oh, just in MA in general, how do you feel about uh, that aspect? I don't know. That sounds sketchy. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds sketchy. We're going to judge the fight as a whole. All right, I guess. <laughs> Hopefully you don't have to go to the judge. Right, That's yeah. Easier. That's the easiest way to get up out of that madness right there. Um, it sounds cool, you know, judge the fight as a whole because, I don't know, you got ring control, you got damage control, all of that, I would suppose, comes into comes into play a bit more uh, at that moment. Um, just because you're not just went basing, okay, he got a takedown, but he laid there on top. You know what I mean? If I'm causing damage from the bottom, then that could be something a bit more, you know, I've got open guard. Just little things that could play into a big key there. Yeah, a lot of di lot of different factors that go into it for sure. So yeah, but nah, knock him out, man. Yeah, That's I mean, ultimately, fun. if you don't need the judges, <laughs> then who cares? Yeah. So, <laughs> and uh, you know, we mentioned kind of uh, watching the uh, the Pride Days a little bit earlier. AJ, did you have any specific favorite fighters that you were really uh, always excited to watch? Rampage, dude. When he got that power bomb, that was like it. Um, that was early. That was like what early two thousand. So yeah. anything uh, the Sakuraba days, dude. Honestly, like that. 
when Pride was doing the tournaments and they would do all the tournaments in one night, mm. that's that true tournament life. Like that's what I I grew up on as a kid. So like now we stretch all the tournaments out over a year and all this. Like it's cool, but <laughs> not the I mean? same. I'm trying to do it all in one night, like that real gladiator one time for the one time. <laughs> totally. Yeah, it's uh the commissions aren't as fond of that these days. <laughs> <laughs> I mean we're we're gonna get punched we're gonna suffer brain damage regardless like it's you know what i mean it's yeah it is what it is I mean, we're just getting punched you know what i mean but yeah i mean i understand it the safety of the fighters i will say commissions are, are they've, they've come a long way and they're they're doing diligently better and better and better better to uh work side by side with the fighters and help uh implement new rules and stuff they're kind of take care of the fighters as long as they don't try to take my elbows away they take my elbows away <laughs> can't have it can't have it soccer kick smart move getting rid of those bro that's career (laughs) ender soccer kicks it's it's more like a it's like it's like halloween you know what i mean this is the candy bowl i get to go pick my candy though you know what i mean so snickers y'all already know (laughs) (laughs) of course anything else no way But uh, mentioning like uh, Rampage and Sakuraba and stuff, man, I got to ask you then, like, have you ever had any fanboy moments where like you're a little starstruck meeting some of these guys? No, I don't think so. I think just because I've spent so much time in the gym as a kid and just always around guys, Rampage, Randy Couture, Chuck Liddell, Tito Ortiz, like just as a kid, I I saw every legend you could think of. Mm -hmm. So like. When I see somebody, it's like even now, like even when I like I see somebody outside of our fight era and just the fight world, I'm like oh, it's fucking Holly Berry. I'm like oh, really? Like she looks different in person, you know? What <laughs> I mean? Like I'm just so naive and nonchalant to it, you know what I mean? I just I don't care. I see people as people, you know what I mean? Um, if you got a good heart, you're a good person, and like that's what that's what people should cherish about you. Not oh, he's a great actor. Like okay, cool, he's a great actor. I want to I want to see who this person is to their core you know what i mean and and uh that's something i just i try to always i try to always be myself man i'm a big lover i'm saying i'm a lover more than i'm a fighter but i just happen to be damn good at fighting yeah (laughs) (laughs) well i think that's definitely a great uh, approach to it man yeah do the best you can to treat everyone the same to an extent there for sure so we need more of that i would say but all right aj i'll leave with one last thing here man been great catching up uh you know another big lightweight fight coming up uh, i mean the bellator title fight is going to be in what just a couple of weeks here before um you know we get to uh, that new year's point but patriki and uh usman very interesting one uh, i'm sure you're going to be watching that you got a prediction for it who you think is going to come out on top um i don't know i wonder if usman if uh pitbull's brother can patriki can neutralize the wrestling that's going to be a big key um obviously i want my title shot this man no, nothing against Usman, but like, who's he fought? Nobody. This man got a title shot. Where my title <laughs> shot? At, yo? I need that ASAP. But uh, you know, Benson, Benson, he's. I feel like he should be next in line for that title shot. And then I don't know. When my time comes, it comes. You know, what I mean, it ain't up to me. It's up to to the man upstairs and whoever's doing the matchmaking. Outside of that, you you call me with a name, and I'm on my way. <laughs> absolutely man and uh gotta take out this rising champ before we can get there so gonna be fun stuff looking forward to it wish you the best of luck with it aj uh, just congrats on getting the opportunity and the last one as well because that was a very good one but uh excited for it man so i cannot wait we'll be watching and uh like i said wish you the best of luck so i appreciate you taking the time man i'll let you get to the nap now because i know uh that's i need <laughs> oh, a nap myself you. man so <laughs> both both go and get a nap in but today was sparring, so we, we 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 put it out today <laughs> there you go. There you go. But all right, AJ, I will leave you to it. Uh, thank you so much, sir. And uh, yeah, just best of luck. All right. Thank you. Peace and blessings. Appreciate right. your time.